the base system of the server is now working so the motherboard CPU memory and it is in the case so the next step will be storage and I'm gonna use an IBM M1015 SUS controller in the system so welcome by Retro Machines and my name is Victor Bart. So here we have two brand new IBM M1015 SUS controllers. They have 8 ports and they have an LSI chipset. But to use them with ZFS you want to run them as an HBA. So ZFS has direct connection to the hard drive. So we need to flash the cards to IT modus. So that is what I gonna do in this video. But it will not be a step by step tutorial. Because if you go to servethehome.com And I will link that in the description. There is a really awesome guide how you must do it. But this video is more me showing how easy it is to flash the cards with that guide. So the first thing that we need to do is here on the back of the card we need to write down the SAS number because we need to uh, put that in while flashing the card. So let's put the card into the system and I prepared this bootable USB stick with the flashing software. Ok the SAS controller is detected. Ok we are booted from the USB stick. Let's do the first command. Ok and the second command. Ok success now we have to reboot. The SAS controller didn't show up this time. So let's flash it now to the IT modus. Everything went successfully, we only have to do one more comment. So now we only have to reboot and see if the card will show up. And as you can see the card is showing up in the IT modus. So if you have hard drives connected they will show up here. So flashing the IBM M1015 to IT modus for ZFS is really easy. Just follow the instructions on the website servethehome.com. So let's do the second card. The next step that I'm gonna do is update the BIOS of the motherboard. So it also supports Xeon E5 2600 V2s, the Ivy Bridge chips. But I don't gonna do the BIOS update on camera. You can read it on the Tyne website. And I think that it only will bore people that don't uh, own a Tyne motherboard like this. And that's probably 99.999% of you. So the BIOS update is done. So let's see if it is successfully. The BIOS is successfully updated to version 1.09. So now I have support for Ivy Bridge CPUs Xeon E5 2600 version 2. The hard drives that I gonna use are Seagate 8 terabyte 7200 RPM, but they are sold by Dell and they came in this Dell bracket. So what I have done is took them out and put them in a bracket of this uh, server. So now let's test out the IBM M1015 SAS controller with an 8 terabyte hard drive with a SAS uh, backplane in the server. From the SAS controller we have a single cable to the front and it goes in the upper backplane and it is one cable for four hard drives. I hear the SAS drive spinning up. And the drive is detected. I'm gonna use the ultimate boot today to test out the SAS hard drive. I'm not sure yet which diagnostic tool will work, but Quindor from Intermedtech advised HD.2 uh, to test out. And he also has a nice YouTube channel. I will link it down in the description. If you like my content, you probably like his content too. Oh nice, the tool detected an 8 terabyte hard drive. Device test menu, detect bad sectors, wipe device, powerful, create bad sector, no, no, not create bad sector, <laughs> file system. Let's do the powerful test and see how long this will take. 
and here you can see if it has errors and is now well, 50 megabytes in so this will probably take a while okay there was a terrible plan it will probably take uh, like one year to finish this test on an 8 terabyte hard drive because like one hour later it's now on 6 gigabytes so let's abort this test and just run the shorter test and that is already much faster than the other test so the system is getting built and tested out but it will probably take a long time to test all the hard drive because they are Dell drives and I probably don't have really warranty on them but they are pretty cheap so I need to make sure they are not faulty from the start so that's why I gonna run all the long tests on them and I gonna put the hard drives in a RAID set 2 and put SSDs in the system and then the system will be in terms of hardware pretty much complete I need to do the cooling here in the middle and then yeah I think uh, then the hardware is uh, done and then I can install Procmox set up the file server and the big rate array and the VMs and make this uh, system into production so thanks for watching and if you like to support me I have Patreon I have Amazon affiliated links and you can join Retro Machines on Facebook.